The Yo-Yo Intermittent Recovery Level 2 test is designed to assess an athlete's capacity to perform intense intermittent exercise with a combination of a large anaerobic component with significant aerobic involvement. In general, the purpose of the test evaluates an individual's ability to perform running intervals for a long period of time, which is particularly important for athletes in sports such as tennis, soccer, basketball, and football. The Yo-Yo test is very similar to the BEEP test. However, this test allows the athlete to have a short 10-second break viewed as an active recovery, whereas the BEEP test does not. Furthermore, there are two versions to the yo-yo test, being level 1, which is designed for the recreational athlete, and level 2, which is designed for the elite or well-trained athlete. It will be the level 2 yo-yo intermittent recovery test that will be demonstrated in this video. The only equipment that was required to set up and perform the level 2 yo-yo test was a flat, non-slip surface, marking cones, measuring tape, and a CD with the yo-yo test software. In this instance, an outdoor netball court was used to perform the test, providing adhesive footing to the athlete. Therefore, calibration of the equipment used in this demonstration was not required. In order to perform this test, cones were set up in accordance with test guidelines. Cones were marked on the baseline, which can be viewed as cone A, 5 meters away from the baseline, which can be viewed as cone B, and 25 meters away from the baseline, cone C. This allows for the 5 meter recovery zone between cones A and B and the 20 meter shuttle run distance between cones B and C. Along with this, an assessor will need to be stationed at the baseline to ensure the athlete is completing the shuttle each time before the beep. A third cone was placed in the middle of the baseline which was used as a marker for the athlete to circle whilst performing the active recovery. This method was used to stop the athlete from standing still for too long between shuttles. The preparation and warm-up for the test consisted of a combination of dynamic lower limb stretching, particularly for the hips, and lower limb compound exercises, being bodyweight squats and bodyweight lunges, as can be seen throughout this section of the video. A study by Macmillan, Moore, Hatler, and Taylor in 2006 concluded that dynamic movements for stretching in a warm-up increase an athlete's power and agility in a warm-up scenario when compared to a static warm-up or non-warm-up. Due to the conclusion of this study, walking lunges, squats, and vertical and horizontal leg swings were included in the warm-up. Hydration levels remain adequate throughout the morning of the test, and a full meal was consumed an hour and a half before the commencement of the test. The test begins in five seconds. Five, one. Change to speed nine. Nine, one. The level 2 yo-yo test allows the athlete to be tested in total distance run in meters or the level the athlete reaches before they either miss two beeps in a row or end the test due to fatigue. Analysis of results can be done by comparing the results to that of previous tests or by comparing the results to the population norms. It is expected that between each test done by an athlete, improvements would be indicated through an increased total distance run and a new level reached. That is, the athlete should be able to complete more shuttles than the previous test if they have been training to improve their aerobic capacity. The yo-yo test is a reliable aerobic capacity test so long as it is conducted in the same environment each time, allowing for the weather not to determine the outcome of the test. If performing the test outdoors, increased temperature or the presence of rain can alter the outcome of the test, particularly due to the increased difficulty performing the test in slippery conditions or a hot environment. Ideally, the test will be performed indoors, eliminating the weather factor and providing a consistent environment. This is the case as the reliability of repeated tests performed at a later date could be significantly hampered and result in inadequate data. Originally, this test was created to examine the aerobic and anaerobic capacity of elite soccer players. However, it is suitable for similar sports that require a large degree of aerobic work where the athlete is running at intermittent levels. 
However, this test would not be suitable for recreational athletes and individuals with health concerns, injuries, or poor fitness levels. In terms of the frequency of use, this test can be applied to an elite athlete in a group or an individual setting, as it is a simple exercise to set up and perform due to the limited equipment necessary to effectively complete the test. It is also very cheap. So besides the variations of the intermittent level 2 yo-yo test that have been previously spoken about, some other viable alternatives to measuring the aerobic capacity of an athlete include the multi-stage fitness test or beep test where an individual is required to run between two lines 20 meters apart between recorded beeps as the beeps become progressively shorter in time. The aero test where again an individual is required to run between two lines 20 meters apart to a recorded beep. However, each beat becomes 0.05 kilometers an hour quicker than the last one. The Burtwell 40 meter shuttle test, which is similar to the beep test again, however cones are placed at 40 meter intervals rather than 20. And lastly, the Miller 20 meter test, where an individual performs repeated shuttle runs 20 meters apart, where they aim to run as many meters as possible within the time of 5 minutes. The result that was looked at for the purpose of the video was total distance run and the level reached before the individual became too fatigued to continue. The athlete managed to complete level 14.3 before ending the test, meaning that the 20 meter shuttle run was completed 28 times, totaling 560 meters. This places the athlete in the average category when comparing to the population norms given by Bangsbow, Ayer and Crushtrup, where it is stated that an athlete running between the distances of 480 and 720 meters is considered average. This can then be translated to an athlete finishing the test between level 14.1 and 14.7. I would like to finish by focusing on other considerations that may impact the reliability and validity of the test, which include, but are not limited to, the amount of sleep the athlete had prior to testing, the time of the day, caffeine intake, the time since the athlete's last meal, the athlete's prior test knowledge, clothing and footwear, and the athlete's emotional state and motivation levels. Of particular importance was the factor of the athlete's prior knowledge of the test. The athlete had never performed this test before and only learned what was expected on the day of the test. This in turn made it slightly more difficult as the individual did not know how the shuttles would increase and at what speed they would increase by. If the athlete were to perform this test at a later date, it would be expected that a greater amount of meters would be run than the previous test, as the individual would know what to expect in terms of speed and level increases. Lastly, it can be seen throughout the footage that the athlete either overstepped the baseline in anticipation or got caught standing still at the baseline waiting for the signal to begin quite a few times. Prior test knowledge may have assisted the athlete in preventing this. If the athlete had performed the test before, they may have been able to anticipate more thoroughly when the signal will go and also have a better understanding of how to pace correctly in the recovery stage.